I'm going to test three different three horsepower electric outboards on my John boat to figure out who is the king of the sea in 2023. Hey guys, welcome to the lightweight electric outboard derby. We're going to be running these three horsepower equivalent electric outboards out on the water today. We've got the Mercury Avator, the Newport Vessels NT300, and the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus. We're going to cover cost, runtime, and top speed. Many more specs. You're not going to want to miss it. Stick around. Up front, let's meet the outboards. First, we have the Mercury Avator 7.5E. The 7.5 is not the horsepower. It's actually the prop shaft rated power at 750 watts. Kind of confusing, I know, but Mercury has rated this outboard at three and a half horsepower, and this is the most expensive outboard of the three that I tested. Next, we have the Newport Vessels NT300. This three horsepower rated electric outboard is the only one in the group that does not have an integrated battery. It's also the only 36 volt, but it comes at a cost effective price point, making it the cheapest of the three. Last, we have the E Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus. This three horsepower rated outboard features a unique integrated battery that actually floats if dropped in the water. It's also the lightest of the pack with a total weigh in at just over 42 pounds. Before we get these electric outboards on the water, I wanted to mention for full transparency that I do not have contractual obligations with any of these outboard manufacturers. This is not a sponsored video. However, I do own the Spirit 1.0 Plus and I was able to get my hands on the other two outboards as demo units to put this video together. Links will be in the video description. I'll tell you what I like and dislike about each outboard and I'll compare the three electric outboards physically in my hands, on my boat, and in the water. So let's get right into it with the top speed test. We will start the top speed testing off with the Mercury Avator 7.5e. This outboard is the one I was most excited to try out because it's the only one in this video manufactured by a company that does not specialize in electric outboards. I was interested to see how the Mercury would perform as they get their toes wet in the electric arena. Five nine, Marley man. I thought it was gonna be a, a lot faster than that. The Mercury top speed was teetering between five eight and five nine miles per hour. I was expecting a higher top speed, something perhaps in the low to mid sixes. In the past, I've gotten six miles per hour on a three horsepower electric outboard. And given the fact that Mercury rates this at three and a half horsepower, I definitely thought it would be faster, but that just wasn't the case. Next up, the top speed test of the Newport Vessels NT300. This is another new electric outboard to the scene, but Newport Vessels specializes in electric trolling motors. In fact, my original transom mount trolling motor was made by them. So the NT300 is not exactly outside of their wheelhouse as it is essentially a beefed up trolling motor, especially by the looks of it, but let's see how it performs. The NT300 top speed was 6.1 miles per hour. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting it to break six, so that was surprising. Another interesting thing was how loud the NT300 actually was. 
This was my first time running the Newport and compared to the Mercury and E-Propulsion, it's definitely noticeably louder and I feel it's worth noting, but I'll recap pros and cons later on in the video. For the last top speed test, we have the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus. Now this is the electric outboard that I own and I am familiar with. That's why I saved it for last because I know what to expect, not for dramatic effect. In a prior video on my channel, this exact outboard and boat setup achieved a top speed of six miles per hour, but let's see what it does today. Alrighty, top speed for the Spirit 1.0 Plus, it barely hit 5.9. Like I said, I've consistently held 6 miles per hour in other videos, but not in today's water conditions. Now, this Spirit is an extra short shaft. The Mercury and Newport are both short shafts. E-Propulsion offers an extra short shaft, which I got so I could run on even smaller boats. I'm not sure how much the shaft length difference affects the top speed in these tests, but I do think it's worth noting. Let's recap the top speed results. Mercury Avatar 7.5e, 5.9 miles per hour. Newport Vessels NT300, 6.1 miles per hour. E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus, 5.9 miles per hour. Newport Vessels achieved the highest top speed, and even if we call the Mercury and the E-Propulsion at 5.8, these three outboards are still within three-tenths of a mile per hour apart. Keep in mind my Jumbo is a fully decked out 1436, so it does have some added weight over a bone stock Jumbo. Hull design, size, weight distribution, and water conditions all affect top speed, so results will vary. Let's go over runtime. Guys, it's not realistic for me to run these outboards on the water until the battery goes out for many, many reasons. So for runtime, I'm simply going to break down mathematically based off the manufacturer's specs. We know the Mercury Avator is 48 volt at 1000 watts and the battery capacity is 1030 watt hours. We simply divide the battery watt hours available by the full throttle watts, which gives us 1.03, or in other words, about one hour or 60 minutes of full throttle runtime on one battery charge. Repeating the process for the Newport Vessels NT300, which is 36 volts at 1300 watts, and the battery I used, which is 1200 watt hour, giving us 0.92, and 92% of 60 is 55.2, or 55 minutes full throttle runtime. Newport also makes a slightly larger battery for $200 more, and I'll get into the cost later, but that battery is 1440 watt hours. Do the same math and you end up with 1.10 or 66 minutes full throttle runtime with the upgraded battery. Moving on to the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus runtime. This electric outboard is 48 volt at 1000 watts, and the integrated battery is 1276 watt hour. Using the same math as before, we get 1.27, convert that to minutes, and we have 76 minutes of full throttle runtime. Full throttle runtime recap, Mercury Avator 7.5e, 60 minutes, Newport Vessels NT300, 55 minutes, or pay extra for the upgraded battery to bump up to 66 minutes. And then the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus with the longest full throttle runtime coming in at 76 minutes. With the Mercury, you're limited to Mercury's internal battery. With the Newport, the battery is external and you could use a variety of their in-house batteries or lithiums from other manufacturers. With the E-Propulsion, the battery is integrated, but the little known fact is you can actually run an external battery on the outboard. There is an external battery cable adapter and upper cowl cover available for purchase. For this, I personally run an older E-Propulsion battery that is 3,042 watt hours. This setup gives me an astonishing three hours of full throttle runtime. Final note, I personally use these electric outboards for bass fishing in many of Georgia's electric only reservoirs. These watersheds are for drinking water, therefore don't allow any gas or oil out on the water. These little electric outboards work much better for this specific purpose opposed to a trolling motor. 
any of the full throttle run times you've seen can easily be doubled or tripled based on your throttle input. I personally have ran these outboards more than 15 miles in one day and can stay fishing on the water all day long with one battery charge. Now let's take a look at the cost of these three three horsepower electric outboards. The Mercury Avator 7.5E with internal battery retails at $3,510. The Newport Vessels NT300 with matching 30 amp hour battery retails at $2,300. If you want to upgrade to the 40 amp hour battery, it'll cost you an extra $200, bringing that total to $2,500. The e-propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus with the integrated battery package deal comes in at $2,600. So we have the Mercury as the most expensive, the Newport as the cheapest, separating it from the e-propulsion by $100 to $300, depending on the battery size selected in your package. Now that we've established runtime and retail cost, we can figure the actual cost paid per minute of full throttle runtime. The Mercury costs 35.10 and runs 60 minutes, giving us the full throttle cost per minute of $58.50. For the Newport, I average the two battery size costs together and split the runtime down the middle, giving us a total of $39.66 per minute. Last, for the E propulsion, the cost per full throttle minute is 3421, making it the most cost effective or bang for your buck per minute of full throttle runtime. You've seen the outboards, the performance, and the cost. So what's my conclusion? I'll start by saying this video is a broad overview of the things that I think matter most when purchasing an electric outboard, speed, runtime, and cost. There's a lot of miscellaneous details that I did not cover for time's sake and because none of them really stand out or separate the outboards from one another. They all set up quite easily, they all have their own proprietary batteries, and they all have tiller screens for real-time outboard data. They do have warranties, and these are a little bit different, with the Mercury having a three-year warranty on everything, Newport having a two-year warranty on the outboard and a five-year on the battery, while E-Propulsion has a five-year warranty on everything. So here it seems E-Propulsion has the edge. With all that said, Here's my final thoughts of each outboard and which one I like the best. We'll start with the Mercury Avator 7.5E. What I really like about this outboard is the aesthetics. I just like the way it looks. It's sleek, aggressive, and looks really awesome on my John boat, in my opinion. To me, it's the best looking outboard out of the three that I tested. I also like how the Mercury feels on my boat in the water. It just turns and has that feel to it that really reminds me of a traditional gas-powered outboard like my Honda four-stroke. Perhaps it has to do with the weight, which segues me into the dislikes on the Mercury. Number one is the weight. It's the heaviest of the three outboards I tested, and it's not as easy to manipulate and transport as the other two outboards. But my bigger dislike is the cost. It is by far the most expensive lightweight electric outboard in its class, almost $1,000 more than the competitors. It just doesn't bring enough top speed or runtime to make the extra money worth it, in my opinion. Next up is the Newport Vessels NT300. We'll start with what I like about this electric outboard, and number one was the top speed. I was really surprised it broke six miles per hour and actually got the highest top speed of all the tests was 6.1 miles per hour. Another thing that could be appealing for this outboard is the overall cost for a package deal. You could get this outboard and the battery for the cheapest price of all the outboards that we tested. Now, what do I dislike? Now, even though this outboard is the cheaper on paper for overall cost of battery and outboard combo, when you break down the value of the outboard that you get in the runtime or performance per dollar amount, this is not the best overall value. Another dislike is the runtime. It had the least amount of full throttle runtime tested with the 30 amp hour battery. And to get a little bit more runtime at 66 minutes, you have to spend more money to get that 40 amp hour battery, which to me just isn't worth the value because now you're $100 away from 76 minutes with the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus. And I know this electric outboard is the cheapest overall cost and it definitely felt that way with the tiller. The new port, I just feel like it's the struggle bus of trying to get it where I want it and it delays and sometimes it doesn't and then sometimes I'm not even in neutral locked in but it's reading that it is. That's the downfall of that one. And last is how loud this electric outboard actually was out on the water. It was the loudest of the three electric outboards I tested in this video and actually 
the loudest electric outboard I've ever ran. And that brings us to the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus. The E-Propulsion has the longest runtime, so obviously I like that. It's also the best value, meaning that you get the longest runtime and best performance for the money that you do spend. Of course, I like the floating battery, and I like the fact that you could also run an external battery, which may or may not mean a whole lot to you, but it's an extra perk. It's incredibly lightweight, the lightest of the three, easy to transport, easy to break down, easy to get in and out of your truck and onto the boat. So that's also a bonus. But last where this electric outboard really shines is in two ways that the NT300 did not. And that is within the throttle, number one. This thing is precise and accurate and feels really good in your hand. And there's no question where you're at when you put it in neutral. Number two is how quiet this outboard is. Whenever I wanna find neutral, it's real easy, I'm there. Whenever I want to put it in reverse, like I can put it in reverse, I'm there and I can just control it really accurately. So what are some things that I dislike about the Spirit 1.0 Plus? Number one, it's not the fastest. The NT300 produced the highest top speed, although the e-propulsion was not far behind. Number two is purely aesthetics. This looks better to me than the NT300, but it doesn't look as cool as the Mercury. All right, guys, after everything we've talked about and what I just showed you, it shouldn't be a big surprise, but I do like the E-Propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus the best. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And I already own a Spirit 1.0 Plus, so I'm sure everybody's going to say that I'm biased. But for me, this is still the outboard that I like the most. And I know what you're going to say, guys. Of course, he picked the outboard that he already owned. Guys, I got the e-propulsion years ago when, at the time, the e-propulsion Spirit 1.0 Plus was the best three-horsepower electric outboard on the market back then. Since then, we've got some new players in the game, and that's the point of this video is to do a head-to-head -head comparison of what I liked about each outboard. I still feel the e-propulsion's on top for many reasons. The Mercury is just so much more money for really no other results beyond the fact that it looks really nice. You're not getting any more runtime, no more top speed, but you're paying a significant amount of money more. So for me, that's a no-go. Now the NT300 is closer. On paper, it looks like it's the cheapest, but it feels like it's the cheapest with the throttle. And then when you break down the runtime per dollar spent, you're really not getting any more value. You're actually paying more per minute of full throttle runtime than the e-propulsion. But those are just my thoughts, guys. Take away what you will from this video. At the end of the day, guess what? It's your money and it's your decision to buy the outboard that you want. And I will gladly try any electric outboard that comes out or is actually sent to me to put in a video to give you my real thoughts and real-time data out on the water so you can see for yourself who's bringing their A-game. So leave your thoughts in the comments section down below and let me know if there's a particular comparison video that you'd like to see on the channel in the near future. Subscribe to the channel, stick around, and we will catch you guys on the next one.